Back in 1965, Charles Robert Jenkins, an American soldier, did something impossible to understand. He deserted to North Korea and got stuck there. For 39 years, six months, and four days, he was trapped in a bizarre Stalinist state, hungry, suffering, told by the government how to live, what to read, and even when to have sex. Never before has an American lived among the secret Koreans so long and escaped to tell the tale. When he deserted, Jenkins essentially stepped off the world. He hadn't driven a car in 40 years, didn't know what a Big Mac was. As we first reported last year, Jenkins told us he'd never heard of 60 Minutes, but he hoped to get his story into Life magazine, which stopped publishing as a weekly in 1972. Tonight, Robert Jenkins tells his story, an American Rip Van Winkle who one night crossed a minefield into a nightmare. Thinking back now, I was a fool. I, if there's a God in heaven, he, he carried me through it. Robert, if God in heaven carried you through it, you ended up in hell. That's it. Yeah, I got my punishment. That drawl is pure North Carolina, where Jenkins grew up in a large but poor family. He dropped out of high school and joined the military. In 1964, he volunteered for a second tour on the hostile border between North and South Korea. He was a sergeant, a squad leader, but had been thinking about deserting to the North. On a sub-zero night, he downed 10 beers and led his men on his last patrol. Well, I told him I heard something, and I'd be back in a few minutes, I'd go and check it out. And I left and I started walking. Started walking north. You abandoned your troops. Yes. I realize that now. If any of the men from that squad are watching this broadcast, what do you say to them? I, I apologize for leaving them. They had faith that I would take them through, but I betrayed them. He told us he betrayed them and his country because on the border he was being asked to lead more aggressive, provocative patrols, and that scared him. He was also hearing his unit might ship out to Vietnam. Instead, he walked through the night and surrendered to an astonished North Korean soldier. Jenkins was 24. Did you think you made a mistake? Yes. <laughs> you have made a mistake. I made a, a lot of mistakes in my life, maybe, but that was the worst mistake anybody ever make. That's for sure. What was Jenkins thinking? Well, he told us he was no communist sympathizer. He imagined that the North would send him to Russia and the Russians would trade him to America in some sort of a Cold War swap. Nice plot for a novel not the script the North had in mind. Jenkins joined the North's collection of American Army deserters. Believe it or not, there were three others already living there. He shared a house with Larry Absher, Jerry Parrish, and James Dresnock. Dresnock told me, you're here, you'll never leave. Then, as now, North Korea was a totalitarian state straight out of the pages of George Orwell. The dictatorship of Kim Il-sung imposed complete control of body and mind. So here you are, four American soldiers in a house in Pyongyang. What are you doing all day? Study. Studying the teachings of Kim Il-sung. Korean political officers called leaders forced the Americans to study Kim's writings eight hours a day for seven years. They memorized it in Korean, a language they didn't understand. And even now, the words lie on his memory like a scar. <laughs> When you were reciting that, you had a pained look on your face. Possible. <laughs> Why? Why? What is it about remembering that? In words, I cannot express 
the feelings I have towards North Korea, the harassment I got, the hard life. Hard, as in the time Jenkins was assigned a woman and ordered to have sex with her twice a month, not once, not three times, twice a month yes. on the orders of the yes. government. The leader almost tell her when to do it. And I got in a big fight one time over it because of one leader. Hmm. I told him it's none of his business. If I want to sleep, where does she want to sleep? Where we sleep? No, two times a month. You don't talk back to the leader. No, but at times I did. But this was the last straw. That's the worst beating I ever got over that. But even that yes. beating wasn't as bad as the day that someone noticed Jenkins' tattoo with the words U.S. Army inked into his forearm below crossed rifles. What happened? <sighs> they cut it off. <laughs> they held him down and cut That's with scissors. Hard. No Just anesthetic. It's hell. <laughs> Jenkins wanted to believe he was still in the Army but now the North Koreans had cut the words right out of his flesh. Like I say, you get used to it. It's really in the details that you start to understand just how bad his life was. Jim Frederick is Time Magazine's bureau chief in Tokyo and co-author of a book that Jenkins published in Japan. Much of it deals with Jenkins' description of his struggle to survive the pervasive poverty of the North. He never had any heat, or, well, when we had heat, you know, we had to stoke the boiler ourselves. He had an apartment, but the toilet didn't flush. You had to flush it by hand, and it didn't really have a septic tank. It had a pipe, an outlet pipe out the back, and so rats would come up all the time. And consider the Americans were being treated better than most North Koreans because the government was using them, posing them in staged propaganda flyers, forcing them to teach English to military cadets and would-be spies. You coward. And Jenkins was ordered into the movies. That's him as an evil American in a bad imitation of Hollywood. Jenkins' family got a copy of this movie from a reporter 32 years after he disappeared. Pat Harrell is Jenkins' sister. What did you say when you saw that face on the screen? It was the first ray of hope that I'd actually had in all those years that, yes, he is alive, um, he looked well. And back in North Korea, Jenkins was touched by a ray of hope of his own. In 1980, after 15 lonely years, his leaders brought a 21-year-old Japanese girl to his door. Well, i put it like this. I looked at it one time, I won't let her go. She was Hitomi Soga, and she had been kidnapped in one of the most bizarre intelligence operations in modern history. North Korea was abducting ordinary Japanese citizens and forcing them to teach Japanese to North Korean spies. In 1978, Hitomi was kidnapped by North Korean agents on this road on Sado Island, Japan. She was shoved onto a boat and disappeared. No one in Japan knew why or how. You two are from completely different worlds. Yes. Did you have anything in common? Yeah, she was a prisoner, I was a prisoner. We're both the same, we both hated North Korea. So that's really about the only thing you say we had in common. In weeks, they were married, a union arranged by the government they despised, but Jenkins says it bloomed into a true marriage. Each evening, they would tell each other good night, he in Japanese, she in English. What did that mean to you? Remind her that she's still Japanese, that she's not Korean, she's not obligated to Korea, she is Japanese, and she spoke to me in English every night. <laughs> Regardless how hard things got, we always stuck as one. They stuck as one for 22 years, raising two daughters, Mika and Brenda. Then, in 2002, the completely unexpected happened. To improve relations, the new dictator of North Korea, Kim's son, Kim Jong-il, 
admitted to the Japanese Prime Minister that North Korea had kidnapped 13 Japanese. The survivors, including Hitomi, returned home. Hitomi became a national hero. But Jenkins and the girls stayed behind. The North didn't want them to go, and Jenkins knew that he'd be arrested by the U.S. Army for desertion if he left. He spent two more lonely years in North Korea, but then there was a diplomatic breakthrough, and Jenkins decided that going to prison would be worth it if he could see his wife again. Hitomi was reunited with Jenkins and their daughters in Indonesia. In September 2004, Sergeant Jenkins reported for duty at a U.S. base in Japan. It appears that no deserter has ever come back after being gone so long. How did it feel to be in uniform again after 40 years? It felt good. Felt good? Why so? I correct my mistake. I come back. And Megan Brennan, they never seen me. They never saw me in uniform, and I didn't think they ever would. <laughs> he pled guilty to desertion and aiding the enemy and was released from the brig after 25 days. I pay my debt to society. I don't expect people to run up me and hug me and kiss me. I don't want them to. Do you think of yourself as a traitor? No. If I was a traitor, I wouldn't have come back. <laughs> We asked Jenkins what amazed him the most about the world since he left it in 1965. He'd never laid a hand on a computer, much less been on the internet. He told us he was surprised that there were so many women in the army, that there were black policemen. And as he put it, you can't smoke anywhere anymore. You know, I'm curious, did you know that men landed on the moon? Yes. You knew that I at the time? I was told that by the Koreans. One of the officers, they wouldn't say what country. It's a bird. They said, Udnahan Nala. Some country landed on the moon. Udnahan. They wouldn't tell you it was the Americans no. who landed on the no. moon, but they told you somebody was on yes. the moon. Today, Jenkins has landed on Sado Island, Japan, not far from the spot where his wife was kidnapped. But before he came to the family farm, he had to know that Hitomi's love flowed from freedom not slavery. I told her, in North Korea, it's one thing. This is Japan. You're still young. If you wish for me to go, I'll go. You volunteered to dissolve the marriage? Yes. And she said what? No. She told me no. After Hitomi, there was just one other woman in the world he needed to see. When he left for duty in South Korea, he told her he'd be back in a year. How's it feel to be in North Carolina? Last summer, Jenkins visited North Carolina, where, at the age of 91, his mother had lived long enough to see her son come home. <laughs> Mama. <laughs> I didn't think you'd ever get to you. <laughs> it's hard, very difficult, very hard. <laughs>